probably had the wrong gear for the <laughs> well, no, you need to talk to someone else about it, man, good man, because obviously whatever God you've been talking to ain't the God of the Bible. This is what you see in Scripture. You see people like Jesus, John the Baptist, the Apostles going to a public place, preaching the counsel of God, and, and woe unto you when the whole world speaks well of you. You're agreeing with the world. Right. You're not agreeing with the preacher. You agree with the world. You laugh with the world. I've seen you laugh several times today uh, with the world. And there's something wrong with that, young man. It should prick your heart. And you laugh with the world. That's right. You laugh with the world. You right. mock with the world. You disagree with the preacher with the world. But you don't agree with the word of God. Do you have sin in your life? Do you have sin in your life, young man? Yes. What sin do you have in your life? I drink alcohol regularly. Well, then, then you have a, you're not really even a Christian then, young man. So you saying you don't know? Wait, really? wait, 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 wait. First John chapter 2 and verse 3 says this. Wait a minute. By, wait this, a minute. Back up. by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. Whoever says they know him, but does not keep his commandments, they liar. And the truth is not in him. That's the word of God, young man. Yeah, I've sinned in the past. I've been still sinned in the past, but right now I'm obeying God. I'm serving God. I have victory. I'm completely obeying Him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm tempted every day, but I choose every day to die daily, take up my cross, and follow Him. Why aren't you obeying God? Right. That's the question. You just told me you drink regularly. You are saying that you're sinless then? I'm saying I'm obeying God. Is it a sin to stop? Is it a sin to stop sinning, young man? I should ask God that now you Oh no, it, 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 it's really just a play on words. Is it a sin to stop sinning? Is that what God wants? Does God want you to be holy as He is holy? Matthew 5, 48, Jesus said, Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. The woman caught the well. He said, Go and sin no more. Did He mean it? Or are you just joking around? Go and sin some more. No, go and sin no more. Paul didn't say, I sin daily. Paul said, I die daily. So if you have no sin in your life, even if you profess to be a Christian, you have no security of salvation whatsoever. You're living in wickedness and disobedience to God. And if you have a relationship with God, you will stop your sinning. Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Your problem's not with me, your problem's with the word of God and God himself, young man. So can, can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. How can you put complete faith in one book that was written about, started being written about 40 years after Jesus' death, and considering that there are about five major historians around the time of Jesus' life, Shut up. and none of them write an absolute thing about Jesus? Well, I think you just present an ignorant conjecture, young man. First of all, the Bible was not start, didn't start being written 40 years after Jesus' death. Okay, the earliest one we probably have is the Gospel of Mark, written in the 50s, which is about 20 years after Jesus' death. Secondly, Josephus, right around the time of Jesus, talked about Jesus. No, wait, no, wait, the Messiah. He was the Messiah. He talked about Jesus in the way. Where, oh, he sure did. Yeah, and who is Christ? Who is Christ? No, no, no. The word Christ, no, the word Christ is... My definition is exactly what No, the word Christ means... Young man, the word Christ means anointed one. In any religion. In any religion. Well, it's a Greek word that means anointed one. But in, in the context of his Jewish religion was what he was talking about in the context of that situation. He was talking about Jesus. How do you know? I've read it. But how do you know that's what he's it's talking about? It's obvious, but... No, it's, it's obvious because he, taught, he, he even says Christians, the ones that are following him. So you I believe question. everything you read? His interpretation do is you? Don't See, I like to read a lot of books <laughs> and base my life I on question. a lot of history, not just one book. Uh -huh. Well, good for you. Uh, but I believe, I believe and trust in the truth. I don't just trust anything I read and look around at everything I read. I trust and believe and follow the truth. But, but why? It's because you were raised as a Christian. Wrong, wrong. That's Jesus ignorant Christ. conjecture, young man. I wasn't raised as a Christian. There's not one person in my family who's a Christian. My mom Pick up your trash. After me. No, no, no. So you know what you're talking about. It's against the law. Okay, but you're still Christian. No, 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 no. Pick up your trash. I didn't blindly accept this truth, young man. God bless you. I didn't blindly accept this truth whatsoever. I studied it out and showed myself to be improved by studying it out for myself. But you're ignorant conjecture, so you haven't studied it out. Because you don't know the facts. I, 
I think they do. You've read the whole Bible all the way through? I have not read the whole Bible all the way so through. So who are you to be an authority on the Bible? I read it through 30 times at least. I'm not, I'm not being an authority on the Bible. I'm being an authority. So tell me, young man, your problem, you seem to have a problem with the Bible. Tell me. I don't have a problem with the Bible. I have a problem with people taking a literal interpretation of it and causing problems. Wait, 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 wait. Who says you can't take a literal interpretation of the Bible? Who says that? The style of writing oh, during the time of the Bible. Yeah, no, 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 no. Sure answer the question. Go yeah. on to this little diatribe here. Tell me, who says I can't interpret the Bible literally? Who says? You? Um, how about, how about people Catholic, like, Catholic, 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 Catholic,
Uh, no, no, he said, before Abraham was, I, I am. am. And let me read to you what the Jews' response to that was. This is how the Jews responded, young man. John 8, 58. Then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out to heaven, going through the midst of them to a past bond. They knew that Jesus was claiming equality with God. And anyone who claimed equality with God deserved to be stoned to death for their sin in the Jewish culture. So the Jews knew he was claiming to be God in the flesh. Now, if you're going to trust the Angel, as your Quran says, and the Angel says that Jesus claims to be God, and you say prophets can't lie in your religion, Jesus isn't a prophet in your religion. He's either a liar, he's a, a lunatic, or he really is who he claims to be, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So, young man, there's no in-between. There's no Jesus being a prophet or a good man. He's either a Lord or not. The Bible wasn't written by Jesus. The Bible says he said he was God, but it was written by Christians. Young man, you're not even following it. His, his Quran, young man, young man, the Quran, written around the 600s, claims that you should follow the Injil, the Gospel, who you're claiming are written by Christians. I agree with that. But the fact of the matter is, his Quran is the trust the Injil. Is he trusting the Injil, young man? He sure isn't. Not one Muslim alive trusts the Angel. If they did, they would believe what Jesus said about himself, that he is God in the flesh. And they should trust in him and serve him and bow down to him Amen. and follow him as Lord. <laughs> oh no, young man. You need to change your mind. You need to right. repent. You need to follow Jesus. Right. Right. Stop following your man-made religion and follow Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is Lord, not Muhammad, not Muhammad's visitation from so-called angels. He's not Lord, Jesus is Lord. He shed his blood for you on the cross. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. If you, if you only have power, but you have no atonement for sins, then you're in trouble with God. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So you, if, you, if you have Allah and you're trying to say, Allah is merciful to be on judgment day, Allah. He died for his own fucking sins, man. Jesus did the same sinner. Only he, he how many people died in the name of Jesus? Millions. Fuck him. He died for his own sins. You're condemned. You're condemned. He didn't you repent. You're the one that's a sinner, not him. Right. You'll give an account for those words on Judgment Day, sir. Oh, Patty comments really necessary. Like, he's speaking his mind. Just the way he was just saying that. Just like that. And so am I. Which one is speaking my mind? But if you are, I'm not Daddy. I'm telling you the truth. You're incapable of forming a helpful argument. Patty misinterprets the love of Jesus. Sure, it is how I express love. Rebuke Islam. Rebuke Islam. What Jesus said in Revelation 3:19. Men are in love. I rebuke you. Therefore, he's telling you the truth. Yeah. When Jesus called the Pharisees whitewashed tombs, he loved them. When he called them hypocrites, brutal vipers, he loved them. Those weren't kind words. Those were rebuking words. And Jesus loved when he turned tables over in the temple courts, he loved them too. So hard words are love. Sex can be more do sin. Preach the word in season and out of season. Think. Rebuke. And it's sure with all love suffering and doctrine. So yes, rebuke is love. A hard word is love. Tough love is love, not just tender love. Pay for the wounds of and a God friend. God expects you to stop your sin. <clears throat> to stop your rebellion against the King of Kings and the Lord, Lord of Lords. And follow him in obedience. Amen. Jesus Hallelujah. Striped shirts. What sin is a sinner that is keeping you? <laughs> what sin is it that's keeping you from coming to Christ and following Him? What sin is so important to you Rationality. that you'll spend eternity to lay your life?
but uh, uh, uh. Uh, the president's university has the right to command you to do certain things as well. But the cops have the right to command you to do certain things. The king of kings and lord of lords has the right to command you to do whatever he wants to. The so problem is... Command us, Lord, because then they could become like false idol stuff. Should we not listen to the police? They yep. could become our artists? Our servants, our servants of justice, according to Romans 13, uh, to keep the law of the land uh, you know, not filled with criminals. They, and, and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're doing something that's good. Do yeah, really you think rapists and murderers are walking around these cities? Oh, they're not a higher power. They're just an authority <laughs> in their in their realm. They're an authority. Well, yeah, they're an authority. You think that authority shouldn't be there? It should be. Okay, they're not an idol, young man. You're not worshiping them. But we should hold, you know, no, you're not worshiping them. They're not an idol. They're not an idol. You're not worshiping them. Simply obeying them because he knows that what they're doing is right. So now, if a cop right, does so what's wrong, why can't we look at Jesus the same way. We're not, not the same way. Him, Jesus is the creator. He's right. Jesus is the creator. That's the same thing. You're the creation. Please don't even create you. Please don't even create the world. Right. If, if he created us, if he created, you know, animals, uh, is that dog confessed by earlier? Is that dog a Christian? If that no. dog doesn't believe he's a Christian, you're really going back and forth here, man. Human beings, human beings are made in the image of God. Dogs are not. Dogs are animals. So, so all the other creations on earth that don't believe in Christianity are going to burn in hell. All the animals run on instinct. You have morality, you have logic, you have reason, you have a conscience. Animals. No, 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 young man. We are animals. We have birds. We are animals. Okay, so. So if, if we're if we're animals if, if we're animals, young man, are you a meat eater? Yeah. Yes, I am. So are you engaging in cannibalism then? And if you're a meat eater, why is why is cannibalism wrong? If we're if you're a meat eater, why is cannibalism animals? And it's okay, right? He, earlier he said... I mean, if we're animals, animals why, why do we have morality? Do you know no. what cannibalism is? Animals, no. animals don't have morality. Animals don't have a courtroom system. Why have you ever seen a okay, system in the system animal kingdom no where the lion gets in trouble for killing the gazelle? And he's putting an animal in jail. Why well, have you ever seen a funeral in the animal kingdom when they weep over their, their death? Yeah. <laughs> when have you, when have you, when have you ever seen a wedding in the animal kingdom? Have you ever seen March of the Penguins? <laughs> Jesus! We are different than animals. But the fact of the matter is most sinners act like animals. That's part of the problem. How do you feel like you're supporting your cause by acting like a fucking psycho? Oh. What sin are you saying? Nobody like here feels like you're rational. Why would I want to join your group where you're a bunch of fucking cultists? I'm not making you stand here. No, but it's hilarious here. to watch. You don't like what I'm saying? Did you say it? It's so enticing. <laughs> well, let's, well, let's talk about rationale. Let's talk about logic. Please, if, please, if you're going to assert I'm not being logic, let's talk about logic. I'm not saying you're being really aggressive. You're out here fucking yelling. Oh, yeah, I am being aggressive. I'm being really aggressive. Yeah, you're saying I have to follow you because you're fucking right. How come, I don't, how come I'm not well, rational? No, no, I didn't say follow me. I said follow Jesus. So go follow Jesus in your own fucking house. No, no, no. <laughs> Jesus says to preach the gospel all the time. Get the hell off my campus. That's yours. following Jesus. That's what you want to do. That's what he wants to do. But you can just talk some logic. Are you, are you an atheist? Yeah. Um, agnostic atheist? You're a softcore you atheist. You, well, you can't say agnostic and atheist together. They're two different things. I know they are. People try to change Why are you throwing them out there together? Well, because most atheists don't really claim what they really say they are. They really are agnostic when it comes down to it. Continue. And it comes down to logic. Well, what's your what's your epistemology first of all? Well, okay. Um, as far as an epistemology, there's two different things. I really don't believe that there is a necessity for human mind to look to a higher power. Um, as in God. Um, I really don't see that there's any logical reason for that. Um, I really don't see that there's any proof that would say that there's a necessity. So, what's your epistemology? Have an answer to that. Are you an empiricist? No, by no means. 
So, how do you get truth? Do you get truth through your five senses, through experience? I'd say so, yeah. That's empiricism. That means you're an empiricist. Okay, so if you're an empiricist, you only believe... Woo, fornication! You only believe what you believe. <laughs> you can only know truth through what you experience through your five senses. Certainly. So, outside the realm of that is logic. Logic itself is immaterial, abstract, then it's universal, it's a law. There's laws of logic. You use them every day. So you affirm that they are universal and they are a law. But these laws don't correlate to God. Well, no, I'm not getting there yet. Stay with me here. You're so saying as an atheist, sign, yes. or whatever software yeah, you right right call yourself, that all but, you believe is what you what you've known through your five senses. Now tell me, how do you experience logic through your five senses? Have you been able to that, that is logic. No, 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 you just beg the question, young man. You can't not, call something logic not, and say you experienced it. You can't call something logic and then say I experienced it. We're saying the foundation of logic, an immaterial thing, is what logic is. Not material, immaterial, abstract, but yet universal. Logic itself is that way. So when you say I experienced logic, you're saying, I experienced, but you're calling what no, you experienced like logic. You haven't proved that. that. You're Sir, but if you being the is a reality creating machine, so say that we experience. Oh, wait a minute. What do you, how do you know what reality is? is? How do you know what reality is? You don't. That's the modern concept of philosophy. Well, I, I found a consistent atheist. What do you know? You don't know what reality is, do you? So what you think is logical will really be illogical, right? Well, certainly, certainly. So then you can really never call anything logical in an absolute so sense. Or Elon's going to have to say. 100% right. Or that there absolutely is a God. It's completely absurd. Sir. Oh, no. From your point of view, it may be. But no, not from my you point of view. You said completely refuted yourself. No, I did not. No, I did not. From your point of view, young man. From your point of view. Absolutely, sir. You have to realize what you just said. Oh, no, no. Not only I'm to me, but also to you. you. Please realize. I'm speaking from your point of view. From your point of view, as an atheist, you can never call anything logical or illogical in any absolute sense. But me as a Christian, I have a foundation for logic. In the beginning, a logical God who gives us logic. And therefore, I have a foundation for something that's universal, something that's abstract, and that's a law. So I believe in the beginning. I believe in the beginning. I believe in the beginning. So I believe in things that aren't material. I believe in things that aren't material. I believe in things that aren't material. That's I believe in God who is a spirit, so I have a right I to believe in the flying spaghetti monster. You do? Is he material? He is immaterial, just as God. So how do you know he's a spaghetti monster? Well then how do I know you God is God? God. I've never seen God. God. So, but if you're calling him a flying spaghetti monster, how do you know he has wings? How do you know he has spaghetti noodles? How does if you've God, never seen him, he's not material. God is God because it says so we in the scriptures. Uh -huh. As sure. you just said, everything that is logical can be argued in circles. No, no. Like, I'm asserting to you that logic to believe in logic and absolute just gives sense, people an excuse to you out. must have in the beginning God. Now let's go to morality. No, no you don't. No, you do not. No, you do not. How? Qualify that. You just said earlier. Oh, okay, okay. What did I say? That you, the justification is saying. Sure. Yeah, you just said earlier that you never know if something's really logical or not. So then you have no foundation for logic. But based on the reality that humans perceive, sir, I'd say that there are a hell of a lot other more um, <laughs> venerable um, excuses you, we could say that apply and are much more applicable than some all omnipotent, omniscient being just going to poop. I'm going to make Do you have any courtesy, young lady? He's yeah. talking right now. You're on my side. Like, yeah. What's that? You're spewing hate speech. Hate speech? Yeah. Wait a minute, that's hateful. You don't even answer my question. It's going to sign around. It's going to sign around. What's hateful on there? Oh, let's sign around. What's hateful on there? Oh, God, God. The way you live your life is wrong. That says God haters. That says God haters, not God hates you, man. Read it again. Go to English class. God haters. R. That's an R right there. Right before that. I got hammered last week. Can I go to hell? Yeah, you're a drunkard. You're on your way to hell. I'm not drunk What about drunk? Why? Why God haters? Well, if you hate God, you're you're sinning. Therefore, you're on your way to hell. But it's not God's desire to send anyone to hell. It's God's desire that you stop your sinning. Follow Lord Jesus Christ in obedience until the end. Why does it matter? That's God's Why desire for you. Sir, I have God, one more God gave us free will, right? Sure. God gave us logic, right? Right? Okay. So, 
Why is it logical to say if God gave us free will, then we can choose on whether or not we can hate and love God? Uh, that's both logical Ooh. as sure. well yeah. as following It's very God. logical. God wants human beings to love him genuinely. If he makes you a robot, it's not genuine. I mean, if this young lady right here, if you could push a button that would make her marry you, that wouldn't be love on her part. So God doesn't push any buttons on you. He influences you. He tries to persuade you. But he doesn't make you love him. And therefore, hate is the absence of love. And therefore, there has to be the possibility of hate if there's free will. And God wants genuine love from free will beings. So if God's going to want genuine love from free will beings, he has to give you free will. But just because he gives you free will, doesn't mean there aren't consequences for your actions right. when you use your free will wrongly. Here today, you probably have to have the free will to go off in the corner and rape and murder someone if you want. The law catches up to you, you're in big trouble. There's consequences for your actions. Same way in God's universe. But God does offer you mercy. He offers you grace. He offers you pardon and forgiveness. If you'll come to Him repentance and faith, forsaking your sinful ways, trusting in Christ and following Him. So even though you've rejected it over and over and over again through your sin, He still offers you forgiveness. That's the good news. He doesn't have to do that. He would have been just and let every single one of us go to hell for our sin. He would have been just because He gave you the first chance. You blew it. You chose the sin. So did I. But now God offers you mercy. Why are you rejecting His mercy? That's the big question. Why are you rejecting this grace, this pardon, this forgiveness? Why are you going to reject it and hold on to your sin straight into the flames of hell? Real quick, if, if I have free will, why are you telling me what to do? I'm influencing you. Okay. I'm commanding you to do what God commands you. If you have free will, you don't like what I'm saying, why are you standing there? Yeah, if you have free will, you don't like what I'm saying, you don't like me telling you what to do, then why are you standing there?